Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives, the only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening, and now, enjoy the show. two types of people in this world, the haves and the have-nots. Love, looks, luck, you either have them or you don't. Money, fame, power, they'll come to you or they won't. The simple, uncomplicated, basic fact of life is this. There are those who will make it and there are those who will not. And one way or another, there is very little you can do about it. Or... Is there? I love you. How could you love me? I, I love you. I'm plain, homely. I have no money. I don't care. I love you. And you're married. I don't care. I know your wife. She'll never divorce you. Well, then I'll, I'll kill her. But why? Because I love you. <laughs> mystery drama Till Death Do Us Part was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Tammy Grimes. It is sponsored in part by True Value Hardware Stores and Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Beauty, said the poet, is in the eye of the beholder. This is one of those all-purpose proverbs designed to make just about everybody feel better. Well, it does no harm, but it has little relationship to reality. The problem is, the eyes of most beholders have been conditioned to recognize only a temporary type of beauty. A beauty that is measurable by arbitrary arithmetical standards. And if a lady's measurements fall short, or are not visible, well, our heroine is Miss Miriam Mallory. Miss Mallory is pushing 40, or is being pushed by it. Not only has she never received a serious proposal, she has never even inspired a light-hearted proposition. Miss Mallory is intelligent, has a good job, makes a respectable salary, but statistically, there must be a number of girls in this world who will be overlooked and Miss Mallory has long ago been resigned. Another cup of coffee, Miriam? I shouldn't. But I will. It's delicious. That's why it's bad. Bad? Why, Mrs. Tennant? The coffee, the food in general, it's too good. And that's bad? If I didn't keep such a good table, you might not have stayed here all these years. I never would have become your star boarder. <laughs> you would have gone somewhere else, maybe an apartment of your own, lived your life differently. What brings this on? I mean, are we headed where we're usually headed? It's funny. I've had three husbands. I know. And I can't even get one. Miriam, you should go out into the world. I'm out in the world. Out where? All day you're at your job. At night you come home, have dinner, watch TV with me. That's being out in the world? You make good money. You can afford to go places, do things. I went to Europe last year. It doesn't matter if I go or stay. I never meet anybody. But don't you want to get married? I suppose so. You suppose so? But you have to be definite about it. All right. I'm definite. Well, do something about it. What? A man has to ask me. Nobody does. Well, you have to make yourself attractive. There's nothing I can do about that, since I'm not attractive to start with. If you want to be attractive, you have to feel attractive. Being attractive is something that exists within you. And it's a glow that you feel inside. You see, Julia, I remember your lectures word for word. Oh, I was afraid that would happen. 
I'm afraid what would happen? Do you know what you just called me? You called me Julia. Well, why not? It's your name. In the 15 years you lived in this house, you never once called me anything but Mrs. Tennant. I, uh, I wasn't aware of it. And now you call me Julia. You came here. You were how old? 22, 23. I was 45. An older woman. Another generation. Naturally, you called me Mrs. Tennis. But you see, you... What am I supposed to say? Well, as long as you considered me an older woman, you called me Mrs. Tennis. But when you call me Julia, it means we're equal. Miriam, do you know what I'm talking about? No. Oh, yes, you do. You have accepted middle age. Would it help if I didn't accept it? Oh, you know what I mean. You've given up. Oh, I gave up long ago. I'm late to work. That's another thing. Why are you always late? Subconsciously, do you hate your job? The fact is, I love my job. Do you feel perhaps it prevents you from fulfilling yourself as a woman? You don't want to believe everything you hear on those TV talk shows. Well, whatever you do, don't speed on the turnpike this morning. I read where the highway patrol has announced a crackdown. Uh, before I leave, are there any further instructions? Any other psychological gems filled with wisdom and insight? I'll save them for dinner. <laughs> Hey, what do you have to do? Kill somebody? I'm, uh, I'm sorry, officer. You're sorry? Now, what does that mean, you're sorry? You were doing 75. I, I, I didn't realize. You didn't realize you're a danger to life and limb on the highway? I am. Um, At 75, you don't control that car. It's an engine of destruction. Officer, Let me I... have your license and your registration. Officer, I never broke the law before. Yeah, you mean you were never caught. Officer... Really? I had no idea. If I, I was... let you get away with this, you'd have no respect for me as a cop, right? Oh, I... And deep down, you'd have no respect for yourself as a citizen, either. Well, I... Uh... The schedule of fines is on the back. 30 miles an hour over the limit calls for $45. If you don't want to go to court, mail it in. Here's your summons, your license, your registration. Have a nice day. Mr. Pomeroy's office? No. He cannot be disturbed. He's in a meeting. You'll have to call again. Miss Dallas, you were told not to put any calls on Mr. Pomeroy's line this morning. See that you remember. My, my. Somebody's in a rotten mood this morning. Ever have one of those days where it all goes badly? Very, very seldom. To begin with, I got a ticket for speeding. How's that possible? The officer wrote it out. A woman getting a ticket? Don't you know that's not supposed to happen? Why not? The answer in one word, sex. Sex? Well, you look at him and smile. And the... I smiled. It didn't work. <laughs> I don't believe that. Maybe it works for you, Valerie. You're pretty. Oh, every woman's pretty. No woman should ever get a ticket. Tell that to Officer Krautwine. Kr who's he? The cop who signed the summons. All right. Let us consider Officer Krautwein. Look, I'm too upset about this whole business, and it's going to cost me $45. <laughs> Cheap at half the price if it teaches you a lesson. What lesson? Ask yourself, why did Officer Krautwein become a motorcycle cop? I don't even know the man. I couldn't care less. It's the last frontier. The what? The spirit of knighthood. Oh, please. There are those men, they existed throughout the ages, who sought fulfillment... No, please. ...in rescuing fair damsels in distress. That lets me out. Women, not... women in peril, women menaced by giants, by dragons. Look, I have to finish the Polichek report. The horse is gone, but he has been reincarnated in the form of the motorcycle. You need all this information, Valerie. There he is, this knight in armor, and he sees you, menaced by, guess what, a dragon. You're crazy. That's what your car is, a dragon... A huge monster that surrounds you, and it's running away with you. Uh, can we get to business? So he stops this monster, comes to your rescue, so when he looks at you, 
You must not break the illusion. What illusion? That he is saving a damsel from a dragon. So, you must be all smiles and softness, gratitude and weakness. All the things that are womanly. Weakness is womanly? For 45 bucks it is. That's why you must radiate these womanly qualities. But you didn't. That's why you destroyed his illusion. That's why he gave you a ticket. He gave me a ticket because I broke the law. I'll do 75. I bet I won't get a ticket. I um, guess I just don't have this womanly quality. Every woman has it. You just don't know how to use it. Yes? I may I see you, please, Miss Mallory? Yes, sir. And furthermore... Look, Valerie, you... it's time to go to work. Oh, Miss Mallory, where is the Polichek report? It isn't finished yet. Well, it's due today. It will be ready by 4 o'clock. That's shaving it rather close, isn't it? If you wanted it this morning, Mr. Pomeroy, you should have said so. Now, wouldn't it stand to reason When you if... say you want something on a given day, Don't that means... Don't interrupt me, Miss Mallory. I was only trying to remind you that... It would stand that... to reason that I would want the whole day to check the figures. But it's customary when you say you want a report on a given Is day it to assume to be tardy, that... tardy, wasteful of time, effort? Mr. Pomeroy, you can't talk to me like that. Miss Mallory, how long have you been here? I think I've been here too long. Now, see here, Miss Mallory. <sighs> Miriam, what is it? What happened to you? Miriam, quit, quit that typing for a minute. Your face. You should see your face. Read that. To Mr. Earl D. Pomeroy... Please be advised that I intend to resign from Pomeroy Associates within four weeks of this date or as soon as a replacement can... What... What does this mean? What do you think it means? It means I quit. But you can't quit. Watch me. But it's impossible. Well, you, you've been here 15 years. For all it means to anybody, who does he think he now, is? Now, Miriam, please. Who does he think I am? Some scared little high school girl from the typing pool? But what happened? Everything happened. This is the day that everything happened. Now, Miriam, please calm down. Talk sense. What sense is there to any of it? I'm just an unattractive, homely woman You're and... not homely. You're right. I was giving myself the best of it. I'm ugly. Don't say that. It doesn't matter who you are, what you know, what you can do. If you're not pretty, you're nothing. You're nobody. Oh, Miriam, you... For 15 years, I've worked for that man. And it's always been Mr. Pomeroy, Miss Mallory. Proper, polite, correct. Why? I'll tell you why. I'm an unattractive woman. He feels he doesn't have to extend himself for me. Miriam, you're wrong. He couldn't help himself. Don't make excuses for him. He's in love with you. I don't want to hear another word. Erwin Pomeroy is in love with you. Please, Valerie, don't do this to me. Don't you make fun of me. I know who I am. And I know what I am. And it's bad enough. So don't you... Erwin Pomeroy is in love with you, Miriam. And I can prove it. Well, there's a completely unexpected situation. We would assume that nobody could ever be in love with Miriam Mallory, the way she carries on. And though we were only exposed to Mr. Pomeroy very briefly... He seems the least likely candidate. However, there are those of you out there, and your number hopefully is legion, who are not concerned with who loves whom, but rather who kills whom in our little tales. Have no fears. You will not be cheated in Act Two. Love, your magic spell is everywhere, says the popular song. Our Miriam Mallory would paraphrase that by saying, Love, your magic spell is everywhere, but here. Poor, resigned, unattractive Miriam, reconciled to a lonely, barren spinster's existence. Suddenly, she has received a shattering piece of news. She is loved. Please, Valerie. You shouldn't make a joke of it. It isn't funny to me. He loves you. Erwin Pomeroy loves me. You've been working here 15 years and you didn't know. I've been here how long? Six months? I saw it the first day. What did you see the first day? The way he looks at you. I... 
Dono, I... don't say you don't believe it. But I... I don't believe it. I said I'd prove it. Watch me. What are you going to do? Your letter of resignation. I am going to walk in there and just place it on his desk. But you still want to quit, don't you? After the way he spoke to me? Certainly. He won't let you. Sure. Because he wants to hold on to a good secretary. Oh, no. Because he wants to hold on to the woman he loves. Valerie. This won't take a minute. I, uh, I don't care what anyone says. I'm going to quit. I'm going to quit. Well, the deed is done. I don't know what to say to you, Valerie. About what? I always thought we were friends. Oh, I hope we are. You know how I feel about not being young or pretty. Any minute now that phone is going to ring. I, I don't know what to say. If you're telling the truth, why has he always been so, so formal, so distant? Because he's fighting it. Fighting it? Why? Oh, Miriam, you know why? There. He's just read your letter of resignation. You answer it, Valerie. Why? It's not my phone. Sooner or later, you'll have to face him. Uh, uh, yes? Miss, uh, uh, Miss Mallory, may I see you? I, uh, I, uh, I'm not going in there. Until your resignation becomes final, you're still working here, aren't you? I, uh... All right. Yes, Mr. Pomeroy? Uh, please, uh, please close the door, Miss Mallory. And, uh, won't you sit down? Miss Mallory, uh, why do you want to resign? I, uh, it's highly personal. Yes, I'm sure it has to do with the way I spoke to you. I would rather not discuss it. Miss Mallory, did you ever have one of those days where it all goes badly? Well, I'm... I'm having one today. Mr. Pomeroy, it's I... It's not have... just a day where here and there this and that goes wrong. It's more than that. It's, it's, it's a day when you finally admit to yourself that, that nothing can ever go right for you again. You, 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 you didn't have to take it out on me. Oh, but I did. I did because you're, you're part of my bad day. If, if, if you are referring to the Polachek report... Oh, bother the stupid Polachek report. Please, Mr. Pomeroy... I don't want to be yelled at. You've been working here 15 years, and you've never even called me by my first name. And I've never called you by yours. It's Miriam. Miriam, do you know what it's been like for me these past 15 years? Being in love with you and being unable to tell you? What are you... What are you saying? You know what I'm saying. I'm in love with you. Please. Please what? I'm going mad. Or, or this is a nightmare. A nightmare? A dream. No, 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 no. It's not a dream. It's real. How can you be in love with me? How can I not be in love with Please, you? Please, I don't want to. I don't... Yeah, now, who knows you better than I do? Who spent more time with you than I have? I can't believe you. Miriam, I was just out of school. I had, I had brains, ability, and ambition, but I... Well, I had everything but money. The only way I could get money was to marry it, so I did. She bought me this company... And a month later, you came to work here. Oh, I fell in love with you the day you walked into this office 15 years ago. You fell in love with me? And it was too late. I belonged to someone else. I was already bought and paid for. Why are you telling me this now? Because, Miriam, I can't fight it any longer. For 15 years, I've kept my feelings in check. It's been Miss Mallory, Mr. Pomeroy. I, I had to draw that line. I had to build that wall. But couldn't you feel it? Couldn't you sense it? I, uh, see, I had lived a fantasy where you also loved me in secret. I love you so much, I had to believe. I have to believe you love me, too. And so this morning, I, I faced her, my wife. I said I never loved her, and I wanted a divorce. And she laughed at me. She said she bought me and therefore she owned me forever. Miriam, she will not set me free. All these years you were in love with me. All these years I 
was loved. And so all the dreams I had, the, the hopes, the plans for you and me suddenly just collapsed. That's why I shouted at you this morning. Forgive me, please. Say you forgive me. I forgive you. I love you so much, I can't be without you. Don't leave me, please. I won't leave you. Oh, I'm being so selfish. You should go somewhere else, meet someone else. I'm ruining your life. Ruining? Today? Now? For the very first time, I feel I'm alive. Alive? Finally. Darling. Erwin. That's my name. Erwin. Kill me, Columbia. It has to be. We were meant to be in love. Don't you feel I, I love you. I love you. Oh, what's the point in saying I love you? What could I do about it? You, you could hold me in your arms. Miriam. Oh, Miriam. Oh. Darling. Oh. I can't give you anything. I can't give you marriage, a home, oh. children. I never dreamed I would have any of those. Oh, you must have. Maybe, but it was so long ago. And you deserve them. Well, I'll settle for what we can have. What? can we have? It'll only be half a life. Half a life is better than none. <laughs> I must be in love. I'm making bad jokes. No, 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 darling. <laughs> you should have everything. It's enough that I destroyed my own life. It's, it's not too late for you. I don't want anything else. I don't want anyone else. Miriam? Yes? a little worried. Are you all right? Yes, I'm all right. I saved you some supper. Did he keep you working late? We, uh, we weren't working. Why, Miriam, what's come over oh, you? Oh, Mrs. Tennis, Mrs. Tennis. I've never seen you looking like this. You, why, you're beautiful. I'm in love. Oh, that's wonderful. I'm in love. It's happened finally. It's happened to me. Oh, I am so happy for you, my dear. This wonderful, crazy feeling, this beautiful, terrible feeling. I never knew it. I never lived. Who is he? Who is he? He's the man I love, the man I adore, the only man in the whole wide world. Do I sound like a schoolgirl? Well, why not? Who is he, Mira? I, uh, we decided we better not tell anyone. Oh? Why not? Well, he's married, isn't he? Yes. Oh. You think it's wrong? Of course it's wrong. I know that. He knows that, but what's to be done? We're in love, and she won't divorce him. But I don't care. I don't care. I'm happy with what I've got. Miriam. You're going to lecture me, Mrs. Dennis. I feel it coming. No, no, dear. I just want you to have everything. That's just what he said. But I'm lucky to even have this. Why do you insist? Why are you so pathetically grateful for crumbs? Oh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. I apologize. Sometimes I talk too much. Why am I so pathetically grateful for crumbs? It's a fair question. No, it was a cruel thing to say. Perhaps. But it's true. I am. You see, Mrs. Tennis, what might appear a crumb to you is a banquet to me. Some children are doomed from birth. Doomed? Yes. I'll use that word. Doomed to go nowhere, have nothing, be nobody. I refuse to believe you. When I was ten years old and gawky, no one ever told me I'd be pretty one day. When I was sixteen and awkward, no one ever said I'd be beautiful. You just forget it. All right, you were an ugly duckling. But honey, you have just turned into a swan. No, I'm still what I was. But despite it, he fell in love with me. And I know why. Nobody knows why people fall in love. Despite what we say, we do judge books by covers. No man ever liked my cover. So no man ever bothered to read me before. But he was with me day after day for 15 years. 
sooner or later, he had to read me. He saw that I was loyal, reliable. I gave him in the office what he couldn't get at home, a feeling of security, peace. I was soft, gentle. I made no demands on him. You're talking about your boss. I... I'm happy. I'm so happy. Yes, you are now, dear. But after a while... I don't care about after a while. You will, you will. You've just become a woman. I've been a woman all my life. No. You only become a woman when you fall in love. And then you'll want what every woman wants. What every woman's entitled to have. A home, children, a place in the community. How could I possibly want anything more than I have now? Oh, Mrs. Dennis. He's wonderful. Hello, darling. Oh, dear. I ordered for you. Ah. A martini with a twist. A chef salad with Thousand Island dressing. Tea with cream. Oh, Miriam. It's as if we've been married for years. I feel that way. Do you know that nice couple we played bridge with last night? Hmm? Oh, oh, yes. They want to know if we can play golf with them this afternoon. This afternoon? Oh, um... Oh, no, I'm afraid we can't. We, we, we have to leave early. We're leaving? Well, I, I have to be back in town tomorrow. I, uh... I thought we could stay the week. Oh, darling, we could, except it's her birthday. Oh. I'm sorry. These past few days, she's been completely out of my mind. Yes, mine too. But you see, darling, I just have to. I understand. She, she won't give me that divorce. Do you suppose... If I asked her... No, no, darling. That would make it worse. Besides, I'm sure she already knows about us. She does? No, she's a bitter, neurotic, vindictive woman. I'm sure she has me watched. I'm sure she knows we're in love. Oh. Fact is, in everything but name and in everything but law, you are my wife. I know that. And yet tonight I have to leave you and go to her. Just isn't right. I told you at the beginning, darling. Half a loaf, half a life. That's what I want more, don't you? Yes. Oh, well, what's the use? Besides, I took a vow. Yes, you did take a vow. Till death do us part. Yes. Till death do us part. Now, we're going to end the act right here. That word has finally come up. That word you were expecting since the beginning of Act One. True, the word has been spoken in an offhand, almost unconscious manner. But once that word comes up, once you say death, no matter how innocently... On this show, you know we mean business. Act three in just a few minutes. The psychiatrist, the detective, the judge. They ask the confessed murderer the same question. When did you decide to kill your victim? When, the killer thinks. And even if he wants to tell the truth, can he? Does he know? Perhaps he believes it was a sudden wild impulse. Perhaps he insists it was a slowly nurtured grudge that grew and grew till it became a burden too terrible to bear. Or perhaps, well, we fall in love at first sight. Can we also decide to kill the same way? Well, here we are. Yes, my house. I'll, uh... See you at the office tomorrow, darling? Yes. Miriam, I... I... I know it's difficult. I... I didn't know it would become so... So... Oh. Darling, there are times when I just can't bear it. I know, darling, I know. 
Let's end it. Let's end it now. What are you saying? You mean you're tired of me? Of course not. Then why did you... Wh- wh- why did you just say let's end it? Is, is, is this just an affair? Miriam, darling, you're everything in the world to me. Everything. Then why did you say... I'm it? depriving you of your chance. What chance? To, to meet someone else and have a full life. We've already talked about that. No, no, I'm not good enough for you, dear. Don't I, say that. Look at me. I married a woman I didn't love. I made a bargain and I'm not man enough to keep it. You're man enough for me. And so I destroy her life. I meet you and I, I destroy yours. That isn't true. You resent what you're doing now. What am I doing? I'm loving. I'm living. Well, you you resent her. She takes me away from you. You do, don't you? Well... And that resentment... Well, it's going to go stronger as time goes on, and you'll even begin to hate me. No, no, don't say that. It's true she won't give me a divorce, but there's nothing to prevent me from taking one if I really want one. What does that mean, if you really want one? Well, there are states in this country where I could get one. There are grounds, but... But you see, darling, I... I'm afraid to divorce her. Afraid? Well, I... I stand to lose everything. It's all in her name. I'll be broke. I'll be 42 and penniless. I, uh... I understand. What do you understand, Miriam? That I'm weak? That I don't have the courage to begin all over again at 43? I understand that you're human. We don't fall in love with people who are perfect. And they're not made perfect by our love either. Yes, you have weaknesses. And perhaps you don't have courage. What does that mean? That I can't love you? I'm not very much, Miriam. Believe me, I'm not very much. All right. But I'm not very much either. A very plain, homely woman. So... again tonight. He's on vacation. With his wife? No doubt. We don't have to go into that. How long is the vacation? A month. They're traveling in Europe. You're a fool. Probably. Why don't you give him the air? I'm in love with him. May I be brutally frank? Or frankly brutal? It has to be said. You don't love him. I believe I'm a better judge of that man than you are. You're confusing love with something else. What? Gratitude. Gratitude? For what? He's the first man who ever paid attention to you. Mrs. Tennis, we've been friends for 15 years. And I do have a great deal of affection for you, but... You know I'm right. I don't care to discuss it. You sold yourself a bill of goods that you were unattractive. No selling job was necessary. All I did was look in the mirror. But it isn't true. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. That's right. And Erwin Pomeroy is the first beholder who ever saw it on my face. It's there. Everyone sees it. You remember we were at the movie the other night? Well, yesterday. There's this very interesting fellow whose mother is a friend of mine. He said to me, Mrs. Tennis, who was that very attractive girl you were with? Oh, I'll get it. You sit still. Hello? Yes? Oh, just a minute. Miriam, it's the transatlantic operator. For you? For me? Hello? Uh, Yes? Darling? Uh, Darling... D- darling, what? Oh. Uh, yes. I understand. I, um... Oh, of course I do. Yes, darling. I love you, too. What is it you understand? He, uh, His wife wants to stay in Europe another two weeks. And why not? It's a lovely time of the year. I hate that woman. Why? Because, because... You're trying to steal her husband and suddenly she's the guilty party. For years, I told myself that certain, certain things in this world weren't for me. Couldn't be for me. There never would be a man. But there is a man. Now there's a man. And she's standing in the way. What are you talking about? Nothing. Nothing. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Oh, man. 
Please. I almost went out of my mind. Oh, my darling. My darling, how I miss you. Let's not think about it. Let's just think about being together. Yes, Miriam, but we're not really together. Not the way we were meant to be together. Night and day, all the time. I know. But what can we do? I tried to do something in Europe. What? I'm afraid to tell you. What is there you could be afraid to tell me? I tried to kill her. What? Miriam, I couldn't stand it. I couldn't stand her any longer. Yes? I I, I bought a pistol. Oh, and... She, she takes pills, sleeping pills, and when she finally falls asleep, she's out to the world. And so after she fell asleep, I thought I could make it look like a, a robbery. I would shoot her in her sleep and, and come back later to, to the hotel room and claim that I... Well, you understand. Yes, I... I understand. I thought of you, you, my dearest, how you were losing out on life because of her, and so I wanted to kill her for you. For me? So that we could truly live as man and wife. So I... I stood over her with a gun in my hand, and I... I... I couldn't do it. I couldn't pull the trigger. I wanted to, but I couldn't. I realize... I'm a... Howard, Miriam, I was just too frightened. I couldn't do it. And I want her dead. Oh, you'll never know how much I want her dead. I know. I know. How could you know? Because I want her dead, too. Miriam. Yes, darling, I want her dead. Oh, no, no, that's wrong. Of course it's wrong. It's wrong. It's unfair. It's cruel. I never thought I'd be, be able to talk like this, but I suppose... There are two kinds of people in this world. Those who take what they want and those who do without. Oh, Miriam, I love you so much, darling. I don't want to think about it anymore. What's the point in, in, in talk? It has to be done. What has to be done? You couldn't kill her for me. But I can kill her for you. No, no, Miriam. It, 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 it doesn't have to be complicated. A burglar. What are you saying? A night when she'll be alone in the house, when the servants are off duty. But I can't let you... Give me the key. Miriam, this is a... And the gun. You still have the gun? Yes, yes, I have the gun. But there's nothing more to say. Tomorrow morning, in the office, give me the house key, the pistol. Tomorrow's Tuesday. When are the servants off? Miriam, you can't... When are the servants off? You... Thursday night... Hello? Valerie? Oh, yes, darling. It worked. Would you believe it worked? I'm the one who said it would work originally, remember? Well, she'll do the job for us. How sweet. a nice cup of tea, dear. Uh, When I get back. Oh, are you going somewhere? Yes, yes, I have to run an errand. But this is Thursday night. The ballet is on TV. Why, I guess I'll have to miss it. Something's wrong. Why? Why do you say that? I don't know why. I just, I just have a feeling. No, I I have to go now. Miriam, why do you have a gun? A gun? I, uh, I was cleaning your room, and and there was this box on your dresser. I accidentally knocked it to the floor, and one of the flaps opened, and I saw a part of... Oh, uh, we, we, uh, uh, the company is going into the, uh, the sale of handguns, and, um, each employee, uh, ha- ha- has been given... What are you talking about? Well... So much crime and violence. Do you expect to add some more violence? And and there's the danger of, of burglars. Miriam, I don't know what's wrong. There's nothing wrong. You're a beautiful woman. No, no, please. Only to Erwin Pomeroy. No longer. You feel loved. That's all you needed. It it made you feel beautiful. And so you are beautiful. 
Every man who sees you now will think you're beautiful. Every I have to go. You can have your choice of men. That isn't true. Now, don't be blind. Men look at you differently. You're a beautiful woman. I'll be back in a while. You don't have to be grateful to Erwin Pomeroy anymore. You've outgrown him. Good night, Mrs. Tennis. I'm late. Late? For what? <laughs> I'll do it for you. I'll do it for you, my darling. The only man who ever loved me. The only man who, who ever looked at me. I'll, I'll do it for you. God, where did he come from? Hey, lady, lady. What do you have to do? Kill somebody? I'm, 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 I'm sorry, officer. You're sorry? What does that mean, you're sorry? Sorry. You were doing 85. Oh, I, I didn't realize... You didn't realize you're a danger to life and limb on the highway. You think because you're a woman, the laws don't apply to you? Well, officer, You think I... because you're good-looking, with a great big smile and big blue eyes, you can get away with murder? Huh? No, but well, I... Well, uh, I guess you can. This time. <laughs> Look, honey, I'm going to let you go. But you promise you'll keep it down to 55. I, uh... I... What was the big hurry, anyhow? I don't know. You don't know? You were doing 85 and you don't know why? No, officer. Now that you mention it, I don't know why. Well, like, I mean, where... Where are you headed? I... I think I'll make a U-turn and head for home. Thanks to you. Thanks to me? Hey, what did I do? You never know, Officer Krautwein. You never know. Good night. James, how can you figure him? Hey, I wanna. How'd she know my name? <laughs> That's all it takes. H.L. Mencken understood it very well. He said, if after I'm dead and you want to make me happy, smile at a homely girl or ask a wallflower to dance. Well, something like that. If you want to make me happy, wait around for a few minutes. Truth is beauty, the poet said. But is beauty always truth? Who knows? And what is beauty, anyhow? The light that is reflected from without, or the light that shines from within? Well, if you listen to us seven times each week, perhaps the answers may emerge. Our cast included Tammy Grimes, Evie Juster, and Ian Martin. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.